Whether AMD had always intended to jubate NVIDIA when releasing their RX 5700 series is up for jubate. But in any event, the minor price war, or more of a price skirmish really, went a long way to making mid-range GPUs more affordable and accessible. And that's a great thing for anyone looking to build a new PC. Or upgrade an existing PC, which is why we're here today. Whether you're a gamer or a creator, using birthday money or fuck you money, we've got you covered. And when you're ready to pick up your new GPU, our sponsor Privacy has you covered. Get a brand new virtual credit card number each time you use it when you shop with Privacy. Click the link below to get $5 off your first purchase. And that's free money. Go get a coffee or something. Let's start with the budget segment. Let's say you saved up for a while and now you've got $500 to spend on building a new PC. Realistically, the most you can or should spare on a GPU in this range would be about $100. With this in mind, well, your options are very limited unless you want to expand your budget by $50 or so at the expense of, say, the power supply. At $100 though, new card pricing gets kind of strange because the RX 500 series is old enough now that the prices for lower end variants and higher end variants are converging. Now, this makes the RX 570 the definitive choice for a new budget card, but who says you need to buy new? You can get your hands on a faster used Radeon RX 580 for around the same price, or a GTX 1066 gigabyte for a couple extra bucks if you need CUDA or want a little more performance. Of course, this does depend on your availability in your region of the world. Now let's say it's your birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. And you open up that shiny new Linus Tech Tips insulated water bottle your aunt got you from the LTTstore.com and you found some money inside? Great. All of a sudden, you've got a $750 budget so what now? Assuming you're building a Ryzen 5 3600 based system or something similar, you've got about $240 to play with here, depending on your priorities. So your options actually open up quite a lot. Now, if you're looking at new in-box cards, your choices are going to boil down to the RX 590 and GTX 1660 non-TI. You can get a 1660 Ti for an extra 20 bucks if you can spare a few coffees, or you could go used and pick up a reference RX Vega 56 for around $200 or so, which will mop the floor with either of these cards. Not only in gaming, but also in any compute scenario that can utilize OpenCL. There's our answer then. If you're okay with used, grab a Vega 56 regardless of what you do, but if you're dead set on new, then my recommendation is to spend the extra $20 to get a GTX 1660 Ti. But wait, what's that? You found another hypothetical $250 to make it an even grand? Why didn't you say so? I'd still recommend sticking with a Ryzen 5 3600 at this price point, but you can spoil yourself a little with a big-ish SSD and some fast RAM. By the time all is said and done, you're left with about $330 for the GPU. More if you don't really care about those niceties. It's here that the RX Vega 56 becomes available to you at retail, and it's also around the price of an entry-level RTX 2060 non-super. But neither of those options, nor anything in the used market, is as good a deal as the Radeon RX 5700 non-XT. Starting at 349 and beating out the RTX 2060 by a considerable margin in our testing, as you can see in this review that I hosted, it's worth the extra little stretch to pick one up over the competition, even from Team Red. Remember, this performance level is similar to the GTX 1070 Ti, but I suppose if you need CUDA, or you really want RTX and DLSS support, or you just really hate AMD's drivers, not that I blame you, TBH, the RTX 2060 is there for the same price. Oh sweet, that's a sizable tax return you've got there. What's that, like $1,500? You can build a sick PC with that. Throw a Ryzen 7 3700X in there, 16 gigs of fast DDR4 3600 memory, NVMe SSD, tempered glass case, and you've still got about $500 left in the bank for the GPU. Obviously, the mind immediately settles on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super which starting at $500 is quite the spend, but as a middle ground between the RTX 2070 and the RTX 2080, the RTX 2070 Super is enough for high-end 1440p gaming at the least, 
to say nothing of its compute chops or RTX and DLSS support. You could make an interesting compromise though. You could save 100 bucks by grabbing a non-reference RX 5700 XT, you know, the ones that don't overheat and sound like a jet engine. That way, you not only get access to excellent OpenCL performance, but you also gain a bit of versatility to shuffle your other components around. Want more RAM? Sure. Want a Ryzen 7 3800X or Core i7-9700K? Go for it. This is a pretty comfortable place to be building a PC from, so balance it to your needs and you're good to go. You there, in the top hat and monocle. You've got two grand to spare, right? After you get a better hat, how about building a PC? I'm talking 12 cores, royal memory, tempered glass with RGB, the whole shebang. You've got about $775 left. What GPU do you buy? Okay. This one's real simple. Unless you want to run macOS or your workload uses OpenCL, you buy the RTX 2080 Super. There just isn't a comparable product on the market right now. And unfortunately for consumers, Nvidia knows this all too well. Hence why the Super variant wasn't a major leap forward in performance for the price over the non-Super and why there isn't yet an RTX 2080 Ti Super. Anyway, if you do want to run macOS or you do use OpenCL, then this is the only real time that the Radeon 7 makes sense. It's really no wonder it was reported that AMD had stopped producing them. Beyond that price point, the only real options are the RTX 2080 Ti, Titan RTX, and workstation cards like the Quadros and Radeon Instinct series. If you're prepared to drop that kind of cash down, the choice should be pretty obvious. Buy what you can afford, or else buy what's best for your workload. For gamers, AMD has nothing in this price point and Crossfire is dead now. So my condolences to Team Red at the high end for now, but hopefully 2020 brings some more competition to shake up the market. Thankfully for your ears, that's already happened to headphones, thanks to the Mass Drop and Sennheiser collaboration on the venerable HD 6XX headphones. With over 70,000 units sold, it's an all-time bestseller on Mass Drop, thanks to its balanced mid-range and natural sounding bass. Taking community feedback into account, they've included an eighth inch plug for everyday use and a quarter inch adapter for professionals, all backed by Sennheiser themselves. Click the link below and get it today at drop.com where new users can get $20 off. Thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out where to buy some of the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked down there is our merch store, which you can get cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.